So let's continue our discussion on electric potential and electric potential difference. So in this lecture, we're going to examine electric potential as a result of a single stationary point charge. And to begin, let's look at the following question. What is the voltage difference as a result of a single point charge next to that point charge? So let's suppose we have the following positive stationary point charge given by positive Q. We want to calculate what the voltage difference is between some point A and some point B next to our point charge. Now, because this is a positive point charge, our electric field lines will begin at the charge and will extend outward as shown by the following example. So this is one example of our electric field line. Now, to calculate the voltage difference, we have to use the equation that we derived in a previous lecture. So we said that the voltage difference between points A and B is equal to VB minus VA, which is equal to the negative of the integral of the dot product of the electric field and the infinitely small distance DL from points A to points B. Now, by definition of the dot product, the dot product of E vector E and vector DL is simply equal to the product of the magnitude of E, the magnitude of DL, and the cosine of the angle between them. Now, let's examine what the angle is between our two vectors. So because the vector E and the vector DL point in the same exact direction, in the positive direction along the x-axis, we see the angle between them must be zero. And because cosine of the angle zero is one, this is equal to the following result. So, the voltage difference between points A and B is equal to negative of the integral of EDL from A to B. Now, what exactly is the electric field as a result of a static point charge? Well, recall Coulomb's law. We know by Coulomb's law, the electric field as a result of a single stationary point charge is equal to the quantity of charge Q divided by 4 pi epsilon naught multiplied by R squared, where R is the distance between that point and our single point charge. So that basically means we can take E and replace E with the following equation. And we also have to replace DL with our DR. And notice we replace point A with distance RA and point B with distance RB. Where distance RA is the distance between the point charge and point A. And the distance RB is the distance between point charge and our point B. Now. Notice we have several constants. So let's bring the constants outside of our integral and we get the following result. So negative Q divided by 4 pi epsilon and we integrate dr divided by r squared from ra to rb. Now when we integrate this becomes a negative and we get the following result. Notice this 2 becomes a 1. And we actually evaluate our integral and we distribute our Q and we get the following result. So this should have a 1. So, this is our equation for our voltage difference between two points A and B as a result of a single stationary point charge. So, let's rewrite this equation up here. So, this is the voltage difference or the electric potential difference between two points near a single stationary point charge as shown in the following diagram. Now, what about the electric potential? So, we define what the electric potential difference is, but what exactly is the electric potential near a single stationary point charge? So, we want to answer the following question. What about the voltage near a single stationary point charge? So, in order to define an electric potential, we essentially have to choose another electric potential. So, we must define the quantity of voltage at point B to be zero if 
our RB distance is chosen to be infinity. So let's suppose we choose this point B and the point B lies a distance infinitely far away from our point charge Q. So at that point B, our voltage is defined to be zero. So that means we can define the following equation. So if RB becomes zero, then this quant, or if RB becomes infinity, this entire quantity becomes zero, and we simply are left with the following result. Notice the negative sign disappears because we're treating this position to have a greater voltage than the other position B. So this equation gives us the voltage at point near a static electric point charge. And we can only use this equation as long as we define the following condition. That at a distance of infinity, our voltage is zero at that distance. So now let's actually apply this equation in the following example. So find the work that is required to bring a positive point charge Q1 next to a stationary po a positive point charge Q2 from a distance of infinitely far away to a distance of 0.2 meters. So our initial condition is we have a charge Q1 and a charge Q2 and they're separated by an infinite distance. And then what we essentially want to do is we essentially want to bring charge Q1 a distance of 0.2 meters away from charge Q2. Now let's assume the charge on Q1 is equal to the charge on Q2 which is equal to positive 6 microcoulombs. So we essentially want to use the following equation. We know that the voltage is equal to the negative of the work divided by our Q. Now we can get rid of this negative because our work will be positive. In other words, the work that an electric force will do on our charge will be positive. Now, we can take this equation, rearrange it, and solve for our work. We see that work is equal to the product of the charge Q1 multiplied by the voltage as a result of charge Q2. Now, we know from this equation that our V is simply equal to this. So we replace V with the following equation where R is the distance 0.2 meters. So we define the voltage when our distance is infinitely far away to be zero and so we can apply this equation. So our Q1 is 6 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Q2 has the same exact value. Our 4 pi is a constant, epsilon naught is a constant, and R is this quantity. We multiply and we get positive 1.6 joules. So this is how much work is required to move our charge Q1 from a distance infinitely far away to a distance 0.2 meters away from our point charge Q2.